Welcome, pastor, ministry leader, to this week's Mary the Vision Vmail. I'm Ron Yutzi. For the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you some things that I pray will lift your spirit, strengthen you in your relationship with Jesus Christ, and encourage you in fulfilling the ministry assignment that He has entrusted to you. So today, I want to talk about spiritual blacksmiths are needed. Remember in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 19 through 22, we read that there were no blacksmiths in the land of Israel in those days. And the Philistines, they wouldn't allow them for fear that they would make swords and spears for the Hebrews. So, whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, their picks, axes, or sickles, they had them take them to a Philistine blacksmith. So that on the day of battle, none of the people of Israel had a sword or spear except for Saul and Jonathan. To keep the Israelites enslaved and weakened, the Philistines removed all the blacksmiths. This was a devastating blow because blacksmiths made swords to be used in battle and sickles to be used in the harvest field. <laughs> Can you imagine the effect that that would have had on the nation of Israel? It made Israel dependent on the Philistines to sharpen and repair their agricultural tools. A tactical move of the Philistines to restrain Israel. Because the Philistine monopoly worked so well that when the day of battle came, only Saul and Jonathan were armed with metal weapons among the Israelites. The Philistines prevented the, Israel, the Israelites from arming themselves properly for the battle and for harvesting. <laughs> it, Satan's tactics haven't changed. His goal is still to silence the molders and shapers of a new culture, a kingdom culture. In other words, have the people rely on the world and its philosophies to get by rather than the life-altering impact of God's word. The need for these spiritual blacksmiths are greater today than they have ever been. They are the developers, the equippers, who understand how to shape raw material into something God can use to advance his kingdom in this hour. They not only shape it, they sharpen it for fruitful use. These spiritual blacksmiths are gifted leaders, like yourself, influencers who develop, equip, and sharpen the body of Christ to resist the evil of our day while influencing this present culture to reap a kingdom harvest. That's our role, pastor, ministry leader, and it's time to take our Christ-appointed place. You know, all successful leaders have emerged from raw material. And tomorrow's leaders are walking around today in raw form, just waiting for a spiritual blacksmith, a pastor, a ministry leader, a mentor, someone who will come alongside and invest in them, sharpen them for fruitful service. Unfortunately, ministry, many ministry leaders today are so busy running the show or focusing on their own image that they don't take the time to work with the raw material in their midst. Spiritual blacksmiths, these Christ-appointed developers like yourself, are needed now in the local church more than they have ever been needed to reshape our culture and impact our communities. You see, our society needs these influencers who can reform the ranks of business, education, government, media, family life, etc. So pastor, ministry leader, it's time for the spiritual blacksmiths in the land, you and I, to break free from the constraints of this age and its compromising influence and return to the ancient craft of shaping and sharpening men and women for God's service. This is what we are called to. We're not called to be celebrities in the kingdom or pleasers of people. We're called to be Christ equippers, those tools in the master's hand to shape and sharpen men and women for God's service. I mean, that's Ephesians 4 verse 11 and 12. So here are some suggestions to sharpen our equipping focus within our church. I pray they help you. Number one, develop a culture that grows people and develops leaders. Church activity doesn't equate to fruitfulness, and more meetings don't equate to equipping. Just because someone's preaching doesn't mean that faith in God is being sharpened or deepening in people to pursue Jesus Christ. And just because I'm having a leaders meeting it doesn't mean that those leaders are being equipped or developed to advance fruitful ministry in the church and community. Preaching and meetings need to be strategic. That they equip, they're, they're actually equipping moments. 
that further develop and sharpen faith, strengthen intimacy with God, deepen connection with his body, the church, and enhance the necessary skills that are needed to do Christ's work in our lives, family, church, and community. Number two, prioritize time in your schedule and in the church's schedule to regularly invest in your leaders. Don't be so busy doing ministry activities that you neglect the development of your staff, small group leaders, volunteer leaders, or even future leaders. I had to learn this the hard way. I had to learn how to do this so that it served me well to prioritize that investment. And if you want help with this, please reach out to me. I will make myself available to share some tips that I have learned that might also assist you in this process as well. Number three, prioritize the ongoing sharpening of yourself. You've got to stay sharp, pastor, ministry leader, to be able to be that tool in the hand of the master to sharpen others. This will require an intentional investment of time in resources, reach up relationships that can coach and strengthen you in your walk with God and in your ministry assignment. I've had the privilege to help many pastors and local churches in this over my 35 plus years of ministry experience. I would be honored and willing to serve you in any way I can. All you have to do is just reach out to me. I assure you, I will respond. And number four, and it's the most important of all, prioritize your fellowship and devotional time with God because nothing is more important than an intimate, growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Spending time in his word to know him, not just developing a sermon. Spending time in your prayer space, worshiping and seeking him, not just asking for things. The strength of a relationship is the quality and consistency of the investment that is made into it. So invest in your relationship with Christ. He'll invest in you. Remember, James, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now, if this has been insightful and encouraging to you, please share it with another pastor and ministry leader. Invite them to join our weekly emails by going to marythevision.com and signing up for this weekly email. Help me reach across the table and around the world to support pastors in fulfilling their ministry assignment. That's my heavenly assignment. So until next week, this is Ron Yutzi. I'm committed to your ministry success in Jesus Christ.